Much respect, fam. This is a recording of the minister's Red Pill Diaries. I'm the interfaith minister in Kanwi Fokwa Ambe, the initiator of the Ministry of Spiritology and director of the Association for Cultural Awareness, journalist and social activist. We're doing this recording um, at the Accra Press Center. That is the Ghana Journalism Association parking lot, um, you know, location that is very, very prime and select here in Osu, you know, around Ridge, that's the central Accra government district. Um, for this particular topic and discussion, we want to be talking about the science of sex. That's right, the science of sex. You know, when people hear that word sex, I know everyone gets excited. And that's the problem. Because you all get excited because you look at it from purely a thematic perspective and not a scientific, biological perspective. And that's why so many individuals out there are getting twisted up with these broken heart scenarios and all of that. So, you know, when we're talking red pill, truthfully, much respect to Anthony Spade, you know. I want to get y'all up on his channel as well, you know, because that's, that's the red pill coach who put me on point, you know. But what I'm doing, I'm actually developing red pill knowledge, you know, from the MGTOW mentality for the African continent. So there are a lot of red pill coaches out there. You know, you can consider me the red pill coach for Africa. You know, I might consider myself, you know, the minister of stingy men. You know, the stingy men's association is growing in dominance on the African continent. You know, it's, it's an interesting concept. Like I said, it's MGTOW, it's red pill. It's men coming to awareness of how to put themselves in check so that the situation of, you know, what we call weaponized femininity, weaponized feminine sexuality and how it's reached the African continent and is dominating men and creating, you know, social incongruity can be checked itself. Men, you got to check yourself and then we got to check that situation. You know, I'm not all out for, you know, radical, you know, antagonism to women, but I do advocate that men, you put yourself in position beyond your purpose and regulate yourself so that if you want to date, if you want to get married, you're able to maintain the proper role play in that situation, as opposed to what we've seen as being twisted up, you know, with all of these new concepts coming into the continent. I mean, even all over the world, it's an issue, it's a problem. So it's, it's got to be dealt with. So I want to talk about the science of sex in this particular recording and video, you know, so that all my men out there, you know, women, y'all too, if you follow in this information, you'll also get this knowledge and then know how you can better implement and help yourself because truthfully, you know, everybody's doing it. You know, it's not strange. You got to get a minister talking about it, a spiritual naturalist minister talking about it. I'm not no Christian minister. Let's just get that straight. You know, I'm coming out with a perspective of purely naturalism, sun, moon, and stars relationship to the man, woman, and child, one, two, and three. You know what I'm saying? If you've ever been on that 5%, that Nation of Islam, studying that 120, then that 1 to 10, supreme mathematics, and you can feel me on that discussion. But I'm not only going to deviate into that, but I'm going to give you that. That's the foundation of my teachings and understanding, to give you a proper orientation of what we know as Islam, you know, Nation of Islam. When you see me representing these skull caps, you know what I'm saying? You know, wearing these long robes and everything, I always got to put that out in clear perspective. You know, I'm Islamic, not necessarily Mohammedan. You know, all Africans is Islamic originally. And we talk of Islamism. We talking about Tawheed. When you get into the Kushite tradition, that's Tawheed. And, you know, like I said, it's just sun, moon and stars. We got to represent it to the fullest in a disciplined, logical perspective and discussion. So we're talking about the science of sex in that light in the relationship between man and woman. And, you know, when people get into these union called love, what is love really? You know, love is a relationship between a man and woman that leads to the birth of the children. Naturally, the universe, universal consciousness has instilled in us this priority to want to create legacy and progeny so that humanity will continue to exist. So man and woman naturally are drawn to each other and sex is the behavioral action that unites the man and woman so that we will continue to formulate humanity on the earth so that they will behold the sun, moon and stars and reality within their consciousness in relation to the universal consciousness. Now, this is divine. Sex is something that is divine. It is natural. Sex is not derogatory, though, you know, these modern paternistic religions, you know, descending from the Abrahamic traditions and their distortion have given this current stage and cycle of humanity and civilization that perception that sex is evil. But it's not. It's not supposed to be like that. We need to understand that between the man and woman, beyond that divine unity, what actually is happening between a man and woman when they're having sex is that the brain, you see it, the brain begins to release certain chemicals. 
And these chemicals that are released from the brain now, actually, you know, if you want to speak on them, we got um, we got dopamine. That's, that's one chemical. Dopamine is something that I mean, essentially, we could say it gives you that sensation of pleasure. Now, dopamine actually has an interesting relationship to tyrosine and then also another what we might call a neurotransmitter, which is a chemical essential that transmits information inside the brain called phenylalanine. Now, I wanna go back to that concept of tyrosine and make you understand that tyrosine, if you're used to hearing that word, it has a very interesting relationship to melanin production in the human body. So black people, truthfully, these vibrations from the sun, all of that, you gotta understand that our sexual nature is something that is deeply intrinsic into the relationship of our physiognomy and biology to the sun and the relationship to the universe and our creation. So we have to particularly pay attention to this lesson because talking about, you know, red pill in the African context, sexuality is becoming a serious problem in the context of our current civilization. I want us to understand why. Because we don't understand that these chemicals are being released on our brain during that action. Dopamine, serotonin, which causes you to feel happy, oxytocin, which is released from the pituitary gland, and that in itself is called the love hormone. This is, this, is that, this is that feeling, that chemical that makes you want to cuddle after sex. You feel me? I mean, y'all feel yourselves. You know, let me just throw that inside there. We got to also talk about adrenaline. You know, that's that energy release. You know what I'm saying? When you're in sex, you, you get that feeling that you just, you sometimes you, you can just go on forever. These are all things happening mentally inside your head. But we're so distorted into the thematic concept of it. We don't understand that this relationship of chemical releases that are going on inside our body while we're having this interaction between the male and the female is actually creating now what I want to call um, a love addiction, essentially. Because when I use that word dopamine in African context, generally the first thing that most people are going to think about is dope. And when they think about dope, people think about getting high. People think about smoking weed, cannabis, drinking alcohol, popping pills, you know what I'm saying? I mean, things that just, that, that get you into a type of chemical, narcotic, artificial, synthetic feeling of this happiness. But what you don't understand is like, it's not these synthetic substances or these narcotic substances that are making you feel happy and high. It's the release of those chemicals inside the brain based on what those substances are doing inside your body. Now, when you're having sexual intercourse now, the same chemical reactions are being stimulated. Now, this is very important. You people need to understand this because this is where now, when you understand that drug addiction leads you to depression because your body now starts to find these synthetic sources for this dopamine and these chemical reactions. Sex also puts you in that same type of, you know, chemical dependency state. That's what love now finds its basis upon. And I mean, some people are gonna hate hearing this, but I'm breaking it down biologically to help you because your love high leads you to depression. Your love high is what, when your heart is getting broken, meaning that that person is leaving you, you start to feel dopamine withdrawal. You start to realize that your source of dopamine is gonna be taken from you. It leads you into depression, just like if you was on some bud or you were alcoholic or any of that. You, you, we, we, there's a love addiction, whether you black, brown, red, yellow, or white that goes on in the interplay of these chemical reactions. So people who are into monogamous relationships, they're gonna have a lot of difficulty with their breakups and you know their love affairs and relationships coming to an end because they have been relying on one particular person to be getting these chemical and dopamine releases. Individuals who are, you know, polygamous, which is a part of African culture, you know, people who are into polyamory, you know, openly having various partners. They're individuals who actually have found various assorted outlets for their dopamine and chemical releases. So it's easier for them to go through breakups and separations and ending of relationships because they have other individuals that they can easily get these chemical reactions stimulated inside them through through that sexual encounter. It's very important that you all need to put this inside your head because when you're all doing it, you know what I'm saying? You're doing that penis into the vagina. I'm just talking in strict biological terminology. You see it. What happens is that you got chemicals moving all up inside your body, you know, neuropinephrine, which causes now, you know, the blood flow to go down to the genitals, swelling up with the erection, you know, the clitoris. They say a woman's breast will increase about 25%. The man's testicles too are also going to increase and shriek up inside his body. And all of this was done and realized through some research, which came forward by some two individuals, Masters and Johnson, who categorized sex, a sexual encounter into four stages. The first being excitement, then plateau, then orgasm, and then finally the resolution. Now you need to understand that the first three stages of this, when you hit that orgasm, that's when all these chemicals reach their peak and then they explode 
explode. That orgasm, probably not orgasm. No, yeah, that orgasm. Let me get that, that word out clear. When you reach orgasm, it's the height of all these chemicals released inside your body because the stimulation in the genital area, it reaches a point where the tension in those organs they it just got to release and it releases all at one time. Now, men is going to reach one high point of climax and then fire resulting in the, you know, a man's going to expunge his semen. The woman's also going to release certain chemicals inside her as well. And then, you know, she can have multiple orgasms. A man's going to go into actually what is called the resolu resolution state where he can't quickly have another sexual encounter. He has to wait for his body to balance back up before he can get back into it. You know, in Africa, we got all types of aphrodisiacs because men don't want to actually let themselves get to that point of climax and then they have to wait for that wait. And the women like that because when women get their multiple orgasms and it releases so much of these chemicals inside them that they get a very high level of stimulation that they become attached to that individual in the context of thinking that they are in love. Let's get that in quote, in love with the person. So a woman's heightened orgasm and multiple orgasms with a particular man makes her feel that she's deeply in love with that individual. And though it's very hard for women to have orgasms, you all need to pay attention to this in the science of sex. When a woman does now, women are more prone to fall in love with a man through sex than a man is to fall in love with a woman through sex. That's just the period bottom line. And that's why women, when they cheat, they're always emotionally involved with the individual. And that's why we always make men understand that when a woman cheats on you, truthfully, you need to realize that that woman's emotions had shifted away from you because of all these chemical releases that happened in her. And she's already looking now for an individual to replace you. So you let her go. You know what I'm saying? I mean, right from the start, if she's even thinking of getting into another relationship with a different man, then you need to realize that you're not probably giving her the proper dopamine releases inside her that are keeping her focused on you. So just let her go, player. Let her go. You know what I'm saying? African men, y'all need to put that inside your context because a lot of y'all like to compete. A lot of y'all go after each other's women, which is not correct. You're making all this competition and all this antagonism, and it's creating problems. It's really creating problems because you all are now realizing what's going on inside the physiology and biology of your body. Y'all getting love addictions. Y'all getting high off that sex. And when you get high off that sex now, it makes you depressed. You don't want that person to go, even if that person's bad to you. And that's what happens when the person goes away. A lot of people, men or women and men, a lot of y'all will quickly now go after the wrong woman again because you've been conditioned by the TV to look for this flashy type of girl. You know, now they got the slay queen out there with the eyelashes, you know, the fake hair, fake, fake, fake feet and fingernails. You know what I'm saying? You know, she, some women, like African women, they got proper estrogen production. So they're all curvy and everything like that. It's seductive. It makes you want to go release those chemicals inside your body and get addicted to it. But that's why you're being compromised because her weaponized sexuality, when she gives it to you, makes you addicted to her. And then she can now manipulate you by making you understand that, look, give me money or I won't give you sex. And that's why you see men now are getting hooked. Y'all getting hooked now because of that love addiction, because you don't understand these chemicals are being released inside your body. So you need to find now alternate modes of getting that dopamine released inside you natural modes so that you don't go off always thinking that you need to go and fuck. You know what I'm saying? I said fuck. I ain't say, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be raw with you. Give you that red pill so that you will understand this. You need to control that love addiction. That love addiction is messing you people up. The love addiction is messing you up in society and you need to put it in check. And I'm gonna tell you how to put it in check. You need to find now natural sources of dopamine release. And they exist. High protein foods. You got to get on a good diet, first of all. You can't be running behind a woman you ain't eating right. So you have to be eating right. What type of foods are rich in protein? We got beans, legumes, soy, dairy, drinking a cup of coffee. Co coffee releases dopamine up inside you. You know, turkey, beef, eggs, foods that trigger amino acids. You know what I'm saying? Amino acids are closely related to the tyrosine enzyme again, producing that melanin up inside the body. Y'all need to eat right. When you eat right, your dopamine levels will be properly regulated and then you won't quickly find yourself getting into these situations where your dopamine levels are depleted and then you can be sexually manipulated. You see, this is very important. Uh, hobbies, you got listening to music, it increases your dopamine levels naturally. You know what I'm saying? Sports, breathing exercises. They discovered that people who do yoga for an hour you know what I'm saying? Every six days, that regular breathing, just your breathing alone, exercising, aerobics. You know me, I got weights up in the house regularly. I jerk at least like 25 kgs daily, fluctuating it back and forth, 10 to 25 kgs, 30, 30 sets. 
regulating my breathing, keeping my oxygen levels properly in order and content so that my respiratory system flows. So that, I mean, when you do it, you get that, you get that dopamine, you get your chemicals rushing up into your head naturally. That's why you see a lot of people even will be up in the church praying that Holy Spirit, all that chanting, the, you know, the hallelujah and all of that. It gets breathing levels to a certain regulation and then they claim they feel in the experience of the Holy Spirit is dopamine releasing serotonin, oxytocin, these chemicals releasing in the brain. You don't see, get into the science of this. And we get into the science of this, you'll even understand that Finding yourself in the sunlight also helps you to regulate your dopamine. Sunlight, tyrosine, melanin. It goes back to it. Black people, you need to recognize this red pill knowledge I'm giving you and implement it. It's very important. Being able to sleep well is also very important because when you sleep in the night, your dopamine levels balance back up. And when they're not balanced properly, you wake up in the morning you see, you're going to have high levels when you don't sleep well, you stay up late in the night because of all of these relationship issues. They also mess you up and put you into a position that your dopamine levels are low. You easily now want to slip back into that sexual interaction with the woman to get the dopamine levels up. And I mean, even I'm going to land on this last point and then I'm going to start rolling out. Stimulating reading, meditation also balances up your dopamine levels. It's very important that you all recognize this because when you get into these books, you get into this knowledge, you get into this spiritual knowledge. You don't know what you're actually stimulating the chemicals in your brain and making yourself being oriented to properly have the proper chemical physiognomy and balance inside your system. A lot of this is just knowledge that you lack. And if you have this knowledge, then you'll know exactly how you need to keep yourself inside proper perspective. So I'm encouraging you all, truthfully, get on this knowledge, man. Get on this knowledge. It's real important. Keeping your dopamine levels in proper order so that you don't become a sexual addict is the secret to being able to sustain yourself and these love addictions and coming in and out of them. And in general, truthfully, I encourage my brothers, you know what I'm saying? I'll be teaching y'all red pill because I recognize that MGTOW mentality. A man needs to be on his purpose. That's the highest way to keep your dopamine levels in proper sync. When you got something you focused on, your dream, your vision, whether it's your work or your business or a company you're building, you keep yourself oriented on what your purpose orientation is, then your mind will definitely be stimulated and then you're gonna have the chemical releases inside your body properly balanced naturally such that you're not going to go looking for the in-betweens of a woman's legs to get yourself tied up in the love addiction. So for my stingy man out there, that's some knowledge for you, some real knowledge from you, because it's not just about saying I'm not going to give her money. The women now are trying to come at this logic that they want your money for sex. So if you don't find a way that you're going to actually equate the balance and control it and contain it to put yourself in check, then whether you're keeping your money to yourself, that love addiction is still going to mess you up. So I hope you all got the message. And I hope that those go out to you all. You can actually implement this knowledge. Do some more research on dopamine and all these chemicals that I pointed out. Do some more research on yoga. You know, do some research on reading, stimulating your mind spiritually, finding yourself into your purpose, identifying your talent and the skills that you have and how you can better implement them. And then you will find out that you can make yourself a better man and not become reliant on a woman and a P-U-S-S-Y. Because that's what they're doing right now. They are messing you all up with some weaponized sexuality. So truthfully, you wanna keep yourself in check first before she gets you in check. Now I've been the minister in County Folk One Bay. That's where I'm gonna ride out. I hope y'all got the message. I hope this information can get to you. If you like this video, make sure that you do click like, share this video very broadly to as many people as you can. Make sure you do subscribe to this channel. We'll be getting our videos at least once a week to keep you now well oriented inside this red pill knowledge from the minister's red pill diaries. Now that's where we're gonna be out from the Ministry of Spiritology. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna tell you just as we always do on our sign out signature, peace profound, peace. That's how we go out. And y'all stay cool out there, man. That's right.